Your love has invaded my heart Consumed me and made me new How could I live but to live for you? Ooh, ooh. I'm leaving my past behind Freedom in Christ is mine Only live for me, I only live for you alive in the fullness of his peace and presence. Join us for our Good Friday and Easter services to experience the light of Christ. If you're new to our church, do fill up your welcome card so that you can redeem your free gift. If you've parked in Bangunan Yin, don't forget to validate your Touch and Go card. One of the DNAs of SIBKL is to be a generous church. It is now so much easier for you to give. You can give via online banking transfer or do it now transfer. All you need to do is to scan this QR code and it will lead you to our giving page. You can also drop your tithe and offerings in the box just outside the sanctuary. It is because of your generous giving that we can be a blessing to others. Do you have some pre-love items to give away? You can donate to Bless Ministry Collection Point at SMCC. You heard that right. Not Bangunan Yin, but at SMCC. Head up to the car park to level 1A and drop off your donation to share your blessings. Scan this QR code for more information. No one 
alive in the fullness of his peace and presence join us for our good friday and easter services to experience the light of christ If you're new to our church, do fill up your welcome card so that you can redeem your free gift. If you've parked in Bangunan Yin, don't forget to validate your Touch and Go card. One of the DNAs of SIBKL is to be a generous church. It is now so much easier for you to give. You can give via online banking transfer or do it now transfer. All you need to do is to scan this QR code and it will lead you to our giving page. You can also drop your tithe and offerings in the box just outside the sanctuary. It is because of your generous giving that we can be a blessing to others. Do you have some pre-loved items to give away? You can donate to Bless Ministry Collection Point at SMCC. You heard that right. Not Bangunan Yin, but at SMCC. Head up to the car park to level 1A and drop off your donation to share your blessings. Scan this QR code for more information.
Light came. And made us alive in the fullness of his peace and presence. Join us for our Good Friday and Easter services to experience the light of Christ. light came and made us alive in the fullness of his peace and presence. Join us for our Good Friday and Easter services to experience the light of Christ. Since 2010, Stephen Chan and his wife Michelle have been helping couples strengthen and enjoy their marriages through speaking, mentoring, and marriage enrichment retreats. He is also the co-author of the book, Maximum Marriage, From Husband and Wife to Lovers for Life, and will be giving us an introduction and overview of his book 
in our upcoming marriage talk. Details are on the screen, so do join us for an insightful session. We are in the times where we are witnessing wars and uncertainties of this fallen world. In such situations, we often wonder where is God's justice in this depravity of mankind. Join Workplace at the River for the upcoming live talk as Rodney Koch discusses the situation of Russia-Ukraine war and looks at the question of where is God in the midst of all this. Let's continue to build and keep our prayer altars strong. Join us as we come together for our upcoming 24-hour prayer altars. Details will be shown on the screen. Do you still have doubts on how to navigate your Christian faith coming from a Chinese upbringing of being filial, especially when it comes to certain traditions? Join Dr. Samuel Wang as he helps us understand the Qingming Festival from a biblical perspective and how to fulfill our filial piety in a way that's pleasing to God. For more details, refer to the information on the screen. DNAs of SIBKL is to be a generous church. It is now so much easier for you to give. You can give via online banking transfer or do it now transfer. All you need to do is to scan this QR code and it will lead you to our giving page. You can also drop your tithe and offerings in the box just outside the sanctuary. It is because of your generous giving that we can be a blessing to others. If you're new to our church, do fill up your welcome card so that you can redeem your free gift. If you've parked in Bangunan Yin, don't forget to validate your Touch and Go card. Hello, hello! It's so good to be in the house of God. It's so good to be here. It's really so good to see every single one of you. Before we even start the service, I just really want everybody to wake up and give me a wave. Give me a wave, say hi. So good to see every single one of you. You know, thank you for being here. If you're watching online, thank you for joining us online. You know, we've got two uh, awesome announcements today. Uh, uh, I'm very, very excited for these two because number one, I'm sure all of us have benefited. We all love to book our seats, to book tickets, uh, to come into the house of God. But I wanna say, from April onwards, the first week of April onwards, we are no longer needing tickets. Can I get a hallelujah? Hallelujah. Everybody say clapping hands. Everybody say hallelujah. On the first week of April onwards, we no longer need tickets. Next week, we still will have tickets. So book your tickets to come next week. I cannot wait to see you at our first service next week. But April onwards, no more tickets. But that also means no more seat bookings in the house. So you just come and bring your friends and sit where it is allocated. But it also means we will still be socially distanced in the house of God. We still want you to be safe. We are still concerned for us and for you because we are a family. So there will still be social distancing. There will still be my Sajatra check-ins. There will still be sanitizers outside. And we are still required to wear our mask when we are worshipping God in the house. The only thing is changed is that no more tickets and just come and sit where there is no cross 
on your seats. So is that all right? So April onwards, can I just invite you to bring your friends, bring people because at the connect counter or um, at the lobby, we want to talk to the visitors. We want to get to know you and we want to let you leave with a gift. Is that all right? So first week of April, all right? So those who are watching online, I also invite you to come and join us on site. There is really nothing like worshiping God together as a corporate body of Christ in the house of God. Now speaking of worshiping God, I am very excited for our upcoming event in April. That is our Good Friday. You know, we are in a season of Lent, but the season of Lent always culminates with Good Friday. You know, I want to encourage you, if you have not been tuning in to our Lent altars at night, it is amazing. We've got hundreds of people worshipping together, praying together, and enjoying God's presence together. So I invite you to join our Lent altar. But also, on the 15th of April, there will be our Good Friday service. It is 100% online. That we, there will not be any physical service, no on-site. So stay at home, but invite your family to celebrate Good Friday. Invite yourselves, invite your friends to watch and experience our Good Friday service together with you. Is that all right? And after Good Friday, it always ends with Easter Sunday, the resurrection of Jesus Christ. And then on Easter Sunday, we will have our first service and our third service open to everybody here in Bangunan Yin. So bring your friends, bring people, because it's going to be evangelistic. And I believe that the world needs to know who Jesus is, the light of the world. Amen, church? Amen? Can I invite you all to stand? as we say a word of prayer, as we get excited for the worship today, as we ex get excited to praise God and to love God in the house of God. Let's raise our hands in worship. Thank you, Jesus. Father God, we invite you here. We soften up our hearts and we get excited. We loosen up our joints to praise you, to worship you, to clap our hands. Lord Jesus Christ, we invite you in this sanctuary as you are going to do great things. In Jesus' name we all say, Amen. Amen. Good day, church. Are you ready to worship God? Are you ready to worship God in this place? Come on, we worship Him. We praise Him because He has done great things. And He will continue to do great things. He's taken us out of darkness into the light and given us life. God, let's sing this unto Him. Come, let us worship the King. Let us worship the King. Come, let us bow at His feet. He has a great thing. See what our Savior has done. See how His love overcomes. He has a great thing. He has a great thing. Oh, hero! No oh, hero of heaven. You conquer the grave. You free every captive and break every chain. Oh God, you have done great things. We have to give it out. Be faithful to every song. You be faithful forevermore. You have done great things And I know that you do it again For your promises, yes and amen You have done great things God, you do great things God, you do great things No hero, no hero of heaven You conquered the grave You free every path and break every chain, oh God, you have done great things. We dance in your freedom, awake and alive. Oh Jesus, I'll say your name is the high, oh God, you have done great things. Hallelujah, God, above it all. I'm shaken but hallelujah God have done great things Let's sing hallelujah above it all Hallelujah God 
Above it all, hallelujah, God, unshakable, hallelujah, you have done great things, you've done great things, oh, hero, oh, hero of heaven, you conquered the grave, you free every captive and break every chain, oh, you have done great things, we dance to your freedom.
for you those of you at home as well and God began to drop some words of knowledge into some of the worship team members hearts and some of the words released you know if this is for you just begin to cling on to it and say Jesus that is for me and ask God to even minister to you there was a word on weariness and the verse and the chapter for you is Isaiah 40 God sees that weary heart and says, let it, let me shoulder that burden for you. Come to me. Jesus is saying, the other word is the road less taken. Whatever that means, the road less taken. Someone here, you need the word of encouragement. And God is saying, I see you. I see you on this road less taken. And He is with you. Even though it is less taken, God, the creator of the universe, is walking with you. And another word that was released is brokenness. It's becoming more clear. It's a brokenness of families. If you identify with any of this word, can I just encourage you to place your hand on your heart? If you are standing in a gap for someone, or if you relate to any of the words that's being released, just allow the Holy Spirit to minister to you even as we are making room for Him. We say, God, we make room to do whatever you want to. Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Lord. And I will make room for you to do whatever you want to. To do whatever you want to. Yeah, I will make room for you To do whatever you want to To do whatever you want to And yeah, I will make room for you To do whatever you want to To do whatever you want to
say that because you have first chosen us. So Lord, we say that you deserve all the glory and we surrender to the greatness and the goodness of our Father. Thank you, Lord. And then sings my soul release I really do sense that there is a lot of us here with a an extreme heaviness in our hearts there is just this heaviness in my heart hard to move hard to walk hard to make a decision and there was just this heaviness and there's such a burden and I think that the road less taken is the narrow road and there is a conflict whether to do the God thing that is the narrow road or everybody is telling you to do that wider road thing and today I'm not asking you to lift your hands but I'm asking you to pray and I'm asking you to join me in prayer not just for a particular person but the whole entire church 
that we're going to take the road of Jesus, the narrow road as we come back to church, the road of Jesus when we go into our workplaces and we do the right and godly thing, as we go into our family and we say the right words and do the right and godly thing. We thank you, Father Lord Jesus Christ. Lord God, we thank you, Father God, for the spirit of heaviness will lift in this place. In the name of Jesus, we cast out the spirit of heaviness in this place. Lord God, we invite the spirit of freedom. We invite the spirit of Jesus. We invite the spirit of love. We invite the spirit of righteousness into this place to come and take over our hearts. Lord Jesus Christ, give us that strength, Father God, to take the narrow road and to do the right and godly thing, Lord Jesus Christ. Father God, Lord Jesus, we invite you into our hearts and we're going to say, How great is my God, how great thou art, Lord. Then sings my soul, my Savior God, to thee. How great thou art. of heaviness let your spirit sing unto God shout unto God tell him how great he is my Savior God to me Lift our spirits. Give God a big hand of praise. Say thank you, Jesus. Say thank you, Jesus. Oh, how great are you, Jesus. How great are you, Jesus. You know, in replacement of the spirit of heaviness, it's always the spirit of praise. In replacement of the spirit of heaviness, it's always the spirit of praise. And we're just gonna pray for a few names on the screen. And I'm very sure they're going through a very trying season, a very heavy season. But we're going to pray that there is a spirit of praise in every single one of them that will lift their spirit. In the name of Jesus, we rebuke the spirit of cancer in May Wong's dad. In the name of Jesus, we say no to the spirit of insomnia, Father God, and Dolly. In the name of Jesus, we pray for healing over Victoria. In the name of Jesus, we pray that the depression, in the name of Jesus, you will go. You will lift. In the, in the life of Janice. We thank you, Father God, that every single one of them now in their spirits, there is a spirit of praise and worship before you. And let that spirit of cancer, insomnia, depression and healing be replaced by the spirit of praise, by the spirit of worship in their lives. So we thank you, Lord Jesus Christ. We thank you, Father God, that you are good. We thank you, Father God, that there is healing in this place. We thank you, Father Lord Jesus, that we welcome you into this place. We thank you, Lord, that you are a great big God. You are a great big God that in all the names of the earth will always have to bow to the name of Jesus Christ. So we thank you, Lord. We invite you here, Lord Jesus. In the name of Jesus, we all say, Amen. 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 Hallelujah. Come on, let's give God a good tribe offering one more time. Hallelujah. He deserves the highest praise. Praise God. Please be seated. Praise the Lord. Thank you so much. <laughs> okay, praise God. So good to be back in the house of God. The reason why we removed the ticketing is so that we can have uh, uh, remove the hassle. I, I did a survey around all the churches in Klang Valley. Most of them actually have removed that a couple of weeks ago. You know, so with all the opening up on uh, April the 1st by the government, so we thought that we just do that because we want to get back to normal. Do you think so? We want to get back to normal as soon as possible. But we still have social distancing, uh, but I think we will have a little, little bit more seats, okay? A bit more seats, so we'll see how it goes. Okay, uh, come, let me pray. Father, I commit this time to you, that as we look into your word, God, help me to 
look at this difficult topic and yet so essential that we need to grasp it, understand it, Father Lord, and internalize it so that as we live out our Christian life, Lord, we know that when you say no to us, it's for our good. It is, you are a good God, Lord. There's no evil in you at all, not one aorta of evil. And so when you say no, it is a good no. So thank you, Jesus. Help us to understand it this evening and help me to communicate it, Lord, as from the throne room of God. I need you, Lord. I need your anointing. I need your empowerment. Thank you, Father, and I receive it in Jesus' precious name. And of course, people say, Amen. So we are in the third week of our study on the book of Deuteronomy. And you know, the book of Deuteronomy is power-packed. You know, I, I, I never really understood it until this time, because we are studying it, so I read it several times. And my goodness me, there's so much in it, you know, so much in it. It's substantial, it's solid. Uh, in fact, I, I like what uh, one guy called Paul Steiner says about uh, Deuteronomy. And this doesn't refer to you at all, this doesn't refer to anybody. He says, if you want to cure your lobotomy, study Deuteronomy. Now you wonder what is lobotomy? And now it doesn't refer to you, doesn't refer to anybody, and don't throw stones at me. When you're lobotomized, your frontal cortex is cut off. So lobotomy is removing your frontal cortex. So when we study Deuteronomy, <laughs> we fill up the empty space, understand? Um, the reason why many Christians cannot discern, they do not have what I call spiritual cognition. They are not cognitive or aware of spirituality of things around. They do not, not so much knowledge. It is concentration. It is cognition. It is understanding. It is recognition. It's all here. And I would go one step further to say that it is not only studying Deuteronomy that will cure our lobotomy, but studying the entire Word of God. When we are soaked with the Word of God, you know one, ma, that that person sees things differently. That person views life differently. It is not what we say we have, it is not what we read and study and go through all the, 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 the scriptures. It's not that. It is internalizing it. It is, it is making the word your own so that it not only saturates you, but transforms you, understand? And when a person is saturated and transformed by the word of God, there is spiritual cognition, there is understanding, there is perspective. You begin to see life in a different way. You are not spiritually lobotomized. Today, I'm going to share with you on a topic entitled, When God Says No. It's very hard. Even when man says no to you, uh, Ayah, why you say no to me? Uh? You know who I am or not? You know, i got people telling me, uh, nobody says no to me. Serious? But when God says no to you, how will you respond? So let me read from Deuteronomy chapter 3. Deuteronomy chapter 3, verse 21 to 29. Let me read it from the Word of God. Okay, I, I didn't put it up on the screen because I want you to hear the word of God and then you follow me, all right? So at that time, Deuteronomy chapter 3, verse 21, I commanded Joshua, Moses commanded Joshua, you have seen with your own eyes all that the Lord your God has done to these two kings, that is Og and Bashan. You will hear more of it tomorrow from Kim. The Lord will do the, the same to all the kingdoms over there where you are going. Do not be afraid of them. The Lord your God himself will fight for you. Now, verse 23 is very important. 
At that time, Moses pleaded with the Lord, O sovereign Lord, you have begun to show to your servant your greatness and your strong hand. For what God is there in heaven or on earth who can do deeds and mighty works that you do? Ayah, let me go over lah and see the good land beyond the Jordan, that fine hill country and Lebanon. But because of you, the Lord was angry with me and the Lord would not listen. In other words, no lah. Not really no lah. That is enough, the Lord said. Do not speak to me anymore about this matter. Shut up. No means no. Go up to the top of Pisgah. Look west, north, south and east. Look at the land with your own eyes since you are not going to cross the Jordan. But commission Joshua, encourage Joshua, strengthen Joshua, for he will lead this people across and will cause them to inherit the land that you will see. And so we stayed in the valley of near Bethpore. When I say, what happens when God says no? Let me clarify. It is not that God didn't answer your prayer. It is not that God is silent. God answered your prayer. And the answer is no. How many of you had this before? Nobody, only me, right? Everyone. Everyone. And Moses pleaded some more, no? But God, why so hard? Huh? Just one small mistake only. Ma. But what mistake? Huh? What, what happened? Well, the context is Numbers chapter 20. It was at the desert of Zin or at Meribah when the people murmured, no water, no water in the desert, Moses! And Moses was angry. But was God angry? No, there's no record of God angry, you know. God said to Moses, the people are thirsty. Speak to the water, or speak to the rock. And Moses was angry. So what did Moses do? Moses took the stick, the rod, the staff, and struck the rod twice. God says, speak, not strike. Water still came out. God was angry. I, I couldn't find a good picture, and I noticed that all the pictures are wrong. I tell you why. Eh? I was looking for a right picture in which Moses very angry. Ah! But look at this Moses, so happy one. So calm one. No? The nearest I got was this one. But I look at the... You, He's not angry. But the right depiction is very angry. Ah! Why did God was angry with Moses? Two reasons. Not only did Moses disobey God, speak, ma. But not strike, ma. But I feel a more important reason, and I sought the Lord over this, is because Moses dishonored God. It was there. It was so explicit when I read it again. In Numbers chapter 20, verse 12, when Moses raised his arm and struck the rock twice with his staff, water gushed out and com the community and the livestock drank. But God said to Moses, because you did not trust in me enough 
to honor me as holy in the sight of the Israelites, you will not go in to the promised land. It's about misrepresenting who God is. Was God angry? No. God was very merciful to them. Moses was angry. But Moses was angry doesn't mean God is angry. Ma. But because Moses, in his anger, struck the rock in the eyes of the children of Israel, God must be angry. Moses misrepresented God. And that's dishonoring. I'm going to ask you a question. Have we represented God well in our workplace? Before we judge Moses, uh, hey Moses, God, why, why are you like that? Uh? Have we represented Christ well in the workplace? Why? Uh? Because how do you know who Jesus is? Look at you. La. Now you know why many people are cheesed off? Because he's a Christian. Ah. Hey! Because this guy, in his dealings, in his marriage, in his work, in his ministry, misrepresented Jesus. If Jesus is like that, I don't want to become a Christian. Ah. Do you think God is angry? Because that's not who God is. God was angry. How we behave, don't take it lightly. How we talk, how we treat people, how we run our affairs, how we manage our marriage, what we say to, our, to the ones working with, before us, how we treat the poor, People look at you because we are Christian. Ma. And I don't want any one of you to say, hey, Pastor, that's why, nah. that's why you know why I don't come to church, right? I don't want you to say that. The best of men are still men at best. But I, I just want to say this. It is incumbent upon you and me to represent God accurately. God was angry with Moses. I want to now go a little bit deeper. Why does God say no to your request and my request? And then I'm going to share with you what our postures should be when God, not if, uh, when God says no. Let me say this generically. The first reason why God says no to your request and my request is because clearly it is not God's will for you to receive that. Why? Don't know. And in my experience, when God says no, there's always a better alternative one. Always. So can I repeat this very important principle? When God says no to you, he sees the end from the beginning, or he sees the beginning from the end. I don't know which one is which, but you know what I mean. All right? He knows exactly how things will end up. He says, No. Why? 
not because he is punishing you or like that, but because there is usually a better plan. Let me share with you a couple of testimonies when God says no to me many times, but let me pick up one and I'll share with you another one later on. In 1978, when Pastor Lee Chu and I were in Kota Kinabalu, Sabah, having moved from UK in 1977 to join the medical service of Malaysia, I was the state obstetrician and gynecologist in Queen Elizabeth Hospital, KK. Because I flew in directly from Edinburgh to Sabah at the request and invitation of the Director of Medical Services, Sabah, he bypassed the federal department. That's his job, not my job, right? He should inform the federal department, no it's my job. All I know is you come, I come, right? But he, he did not inform the federal government later on. And because I did not go through the proper channel, there's no record of me in the MOH in KL of me being in Sabah, you know. Somehow or other, it was not there. So for a good 10 months or the one year, I had no salary. I just worked my guts out. Lah. And being the only obstetrician and gynecologist in the whole state of Sabah at that time, in 1977-78, of one million people, at that time only one million, now three million. Lah. One gynecologist for one million people, you know. I really worked my guts out. I got just newly married some more. I got married in 1977. And know, Pastor Lee Chu came over to Sabah and she spent almost 10 years in Edinburgh, in, in Edinburgh studying and so, so forth. She went back to Edinburgh four times in one year, you know. And because we're not used to it, we were stuck in the, in the, in the nurse's Quarters, one room they gave us. There was no housing, no quarters. So one and our and our luggage arrived back. Wow, the place was hardly moved, man. And and morning till night, I was in the in the OT. I was traveling to Santakan la, Tawau la, Labuan la, Keningau la, Sipitang la, do operations as I wrote, I wrote in my book. Then I don't even know how the girl, how the woman looks like that end one. All I see is uteruses. <laughs> I just operate, 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 operate. I don't know how she looks like. Whether she did survive or not, I don't know. Because I, you know. And you know that at one stage, I, I wrote in my book, one of my books, that uh, in Sandakan, uh, I ran into trouble. My last case, you know, seven cases that day, I remembered. My last case, I ran into trouble. The, 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 the plane, uh, the, the, the time of the Fokker friendship, you know, the, the, uh, uh, was supposed to leave at 8 o'clock. And because I was delayed, the, the director of medical service rang up the chief minister. Chief minister rang them up. The plane was delayed to wait for me, you know. Until 9.30, I came out. Everybody, what happened? Huh? Dr. Chiu finished operation and he come. Long and short of it is, we said, enough, enough. La. That boat, man. Uh, no pay. Uh, uh, Slog like mad. La. Not appreciated. La. Stay in the stupid room. La. <laughs> Go. Go. So where else to go? So I applied for Australia. Actually, I got a partnership in North Shore, Sydney, in a place, no, North Shore, Sydney, in a place called, in a partnership. And the, and, and the principal was a Christian some more. I, I still remember his name, a Hungarian guy called Dr. Peter Krauss. Wow! He, that time we got, we, we got Zoom, we got nothing one, right? Just phone call name. Huh? Wow! He gave me a, a partnership, you know. And Pastor Nietzsche had a registrar to post in the Royal Adelaide Hospital, even though maybe separate, doesn't matter. Wow, praise the Lord, man. He went to the, the, and the MOH hospital, Dr. Mito Chan. I resigned. He was so shocked. Oh, I enjoy looking at his face. I resigned the way you treat me, you know what I mean? Then after we packed up, I know something, we prayed, fasted. God was silent. We had no peace. Something tells us it's not the right thing to do. But how can it be? God, Australia! I remember two weeks before we were supposed to go. I took up the phone. 
I rang up Dr. Krause, Peter, I'm not coming. What? And Pastor Dishu rang up the director of Royal Adelaide, I'm not coming. I remember when we put down the phone, we hugged each other, cry buckets, man. Cry buckets, man. God said no. If I had gone, I would probably be living in a fantastic big mansion in Sydney, driving Mercedes, maybe a two BMWs, have a heated swimming pool. But if I had gone, there would be no SIPKL. Did I understand? No. But God said no. no. I can almost hear some of you asking me, how do you know uh, God said no? Uh? I'm so glad you asked. <laughs> That's another story. The key is we had no peace. Peace of God is very important in doing anything, whether it is of God or not of God. Because the Holy Spirit lives in you. The Holy Spirit will always guard you and guide you into all truth one. Whether you resist it, cover it, smother it, stifle it, it's your problem. But the Holy Spirit will prompt you. You will have no peace like all we both. No peace. Totally no peace at all. Did we pray? Yes. Just in case you think that this is not important, let me. It, this is almost like a Bible study kind of thing. It's okay with you, huh? So it's not a usual type of preaching, huh? You don't mind, huh? The peace of God, I shared with some of you before, overrides the open door. Okay? The peace of God always overrides the open door. In other words, wow, I'm so good, you know. The door was open for me to migrate. The door was open for me to do this. Everything went on well. Wow, you know what I mean? A stranger came and directed me there. Lord. Angels come, Lord. the sun shone this way, rainbow come. Lord. No. All this, uh, wow, God is so good. Oh, door, oh no. Key is very important. Huh? Do you have peace or not? Why? Peace of God overrides open door. 2 Corinthians chapter 3, verse 12 to 13. It's a scriptural principle. Paul had an opportunity to go to Bithynia and Galatia. He said the door was open. So he was wondering, yeah, because the door is now open for me to go north to Bithynia and Galatia to evangelize, therefore it must be God lah. But no, he stayed on because he had no peace. It's there. He had no peace. So he stayed. And what happened when he stayed that night, he had a vision of the Macedonian call to go not north but west to Europe. And because he obeyed, the peace of God overrides the open door, the gospel reached Europe. See? When God says no, wait until you have the peace. Not just open door means go in and charge in. Now don't do that. Why? Because it can be led by your flesh. That's what you want, ma. You think I don't want to go to Australia? By no peace. And I knew if I had gone to Australia, I would be out of God's will. 
for my life. Don't worry about that. The second reason why God says no is wrong motive. Check your heart. Why did you want that one thing? Why do you, wow, Pastor, I want to, to bless God. I want to honor God in Australia. I want to honor God in, in whatever it is. Sure not. James chapter 4, verse 3 says, When you ask, you do not receive because you ask with wrong motives that you may spend whatever you get on yourself. That's the truth. That's the truth. But if you bring God in, you see? Sounds so spiritual. But God is God. He knows. So it's no wrong motive. You know, there was an incident in which two disciples by the name of James and John came to Jesus. Jesus, when you come in your kingdom, can one of us sit on your left and one of us sit on your right? Even the mother came on. Jesus, uh, my son, uh, good boys, oh, your disciples, uh, can they sit on your left, on your right? Wrong motive. Jesus says, it's not for me to say. No way. Third reason is double-mindedness. The Bible says that a man should not think he will receive anything from the Lord if he is double-minded because a double-minded man is unstable in all his ways. Unstable doesn't mean, doesn't mean go crazy. Eh? You don't do crazy, right, if you're, if you're double-minded. Unstable means you go young, go young in your faith. Unstable means half of it is carnal. It's not totally carnal, not totally spiritual. None of us are totally carnal, right? We are not carnal, 100%. So we put in spirituality, jump it, double-minded. Cannot fool God, believe me. Cannot fool God. So God says, no. So what do we do? What should our postures be? Very important. Hear me very well, my friend. Our postures should not be, God, uh, you're so angry with you. Uh, I will never serve you again. Uh. Worse still, I will never step foot in your church. Who do you think you are? So we thank God. Uh, very common. Uh. God, you didn't give me that deal. Uh. I will never serve you again. Don't talk giving you one cent anymore. I will never come to church again because you did not give me that girl. You didn't give me that cell leader position, no. You didn't give me that position in ministry. Uh. I troubled. You know how many times we say that? We throw tantrums. You think God is worried? Huh? Do you think God, oh, you're so sorry, oh, Moses? No. God is God. You know, one thing I learned from one of my mentors, I got mentors one, no? The guy by the name of Danny G, Danny Glugrumucci, is an Italian guy in Adelaide. He said that once to me, always remember, Wing Chi, 
whatever is sacred to God remains sacred to God. Meaning, whatever is sacred remains sacred. No matter how much you think God is, God is not bothered about your opinion of Him. God is not going to condescend to you just because you are so and so. Whatever is sacred remains sacred. Remember that. God is God. I think it was Leighton Ford who said this. I, I could be wrong. He says, God is really God, Manu. He is not applying for a job. Understand? God is God. He is not applying for a job, you know. And you and I have to recognize that. So what do we do? Trust Him. Trust Him. Trust Him. Even though you don't understand. Let me share with you another occasion when God said no to me. There are many times. I just pick up two big ones. In 2012, I had tremendous hopes of people taking my place. I had two EPs at a time, executive pastors, who were riding so high. And I had so much hopes in them. And in fact, I remembered in 2013, in our SPO retreat in Genting, I told the two of them, if Pastor Di Chu was there, and I think my PA was there, Angeline, I'm stepping down in 2017. Four more years. The process has started. One of you will take over. Did I ask God? Yeah. Believe me, I did. Because in 2017, when I planned to step down, I would have been 71 years old. Now you can quantify how old I am, right? Which senior pastor goes to 71 years old one more? And I'm not going to do this for the rest of my life, understand? 2013. 2014. One of them fell morally. My whole world crashed. Totally crashed. Why? Why? 2015. The other one left. Because he wanted to start a church in the, in the Bahasa side to, to, to impact the young people. What about SIPKL? You know, my entire world crashed. And I said, Lord, why? I want to step down. God said, no. Not yet. I didn't understand, you know, I didn't understand. But now, seven years later, I know why. In that seven years between 2015 to 2022, God has enabled me to raise up very good young people today. Excellent new crop of young pastors. 
and I want to believe that they will take the church to the next level. Come on, let's give God a clap. Did I understand why? No. Maybe God wanted me to continue to lead the church for the last seven years still. Because through all the tumultuous times and all the days, maybe in God's economy, it's not yet time. But I could, I could understand it. All I need was, I trusted God. Lo. If God you want me to continue, I continue. La. With joy. With resignation. Continue to do what I, in my opinion, I just give my best shot to God. So can I encourage you? When God says no, trust Him. Read this verse with me. Romans 8.28, everybody read out loud. Those of you at home, online, on site, everybody come read it with me. Shall we do it with me? And let's believe it. Shall we do that? Because God has a greater plan. Do you think so? Yeah, I believe God has a greater plan for us. Do you think so? The church has grown. We have weathered a storm of the MCO. You don't think so? We have grown in so many ways. All right? Come on. God is a good God. Amen? Come on, read this with me. Are you ready? Romans 8, 28. Read out loud on site and online. Are you ready? Read out loud with me. One, two, three. Work together for good to those who love Him. One more time. Let's believe it. Shall we do that, church? Let's believe it. For good to those who love Him and are called according to His purpose. Now, God, God has a greater purpose. If we love Him, the why He says no is because there's a greater plan. There's a better plan. There's a better plan. And all we need to do is to trust Him implicitly. The second thing our response should be is don't only trust. You have to submit. You have to surrender. You have to surrender to His sovereignty. Even Jesus, uh, the Son of God, uh, had no from the Father. You know that? At Gethsemane. Remember what Jesus said? Father, if it's your will, uh, remove this cup from me. Not my will, but yours be done. God says, no. You have to go through it. And so what Jesus said, let your will be done. Father, if it be possible, take this cup from me. If it be possible, Lord, spare me, Calvary. Father said no. And Jesus submitted. And the result, we are here today. Amen. So can I encourage you? When we don't understand, trust God, and submit. Thirdly, very important. Continue to serve. Why is this important? The third one is so important. Because the normal reaction is, give up la. God, why are you like that? You know, I did so much for you, you know. I stopped serving. I stopped coming to church. I'm so angry. I'm so disappointed. Don't ever do that, please. Look at Moses. You know, when God said to Moses, you cannot cross, but Moses pleaded, why? Uh, I let the 40 years and now I cannot cross. God says no means no. Lah. And you know what God said to Moses? God 
go to the top of Pisgah, look west, north, south, east, look at the land with your own eyes, since you cannot cross. Verse 28 is very important. This is my point to you, friend. Don't throw in the towel. Don't throw tantrums with God. Don't think, I don't want to serve you anymore and go take it back at God. What did God say to Moses? Commission Joshua. Encourage Joshua. Strengthen Joshua. For he will lead my people across the promised land. The key is this. Finish your assignment, Moses. You know, I, I, two or three weeks ago, I spoke to Golden Eagles on finishing well. How do you finish well? Uh? Now, I, I don't think it only really applies to only the older folks. It applies to every one of us, right? And one of the things I said to everyone is this. One of the key things for you and I to finish well is to finish... How do I know I finish well? Uh? When you complete your assignments. You know what your assignments are, ma. If you are a teacher, teach well. If you are a pastor, pastor well. If you are a businessman, do well. If you are a student, study well. If you are a teacher, teach well. All right? As long as you and I have one ounce of energy left, one breath in my nostril, serve God. Why waste your time, waste your talent away? Why angry with God, war? No. Moses, I said no to you. But I want you to finish your assignment. Eh? Encourage Joshua. Commission Joshua. Strengthen Joshua. And after that, I take you home. Moses, you have finished well. So can I encourage you? Serve God. Serve God. Finish the assignment God has given to you, understand? So trust Him, submit to Him, and finish well. Let me close. Can I have the musicians? Jeremiah 29, verse 11. We all know this. For I know the plans I have for you, God says. God is a good God, understand? He's a good God. He has blessed you. Bless Him back. Serve Him unreservedly, unconditionally. Because God says, I know the plans I have for you. Plans to prosper you not to harm you, plans to give you a hope and a future. It is loaded. It's absolutely loaded. In the staff refresh, this coming to you, say, I'm going to unpackage this. Every word, every phrase, I'm going to study the Hebrew. I'm going to share with your staff refresh on what I call unknown future, known God. When we understand this verse in all its comprehensiveness, in all its original language, you know what God is saying. And you have confidence that God will never, never shortchange you. But you've got to trust Him. Understand, you have to trust Him. Because God says, I know. Who knows? God knows. I know. Do you know what the amazing thing is this? At the end of the day, when God said to Moses, you cannot cross now. And yet in Matthew 17, I think, at the Mount of Transfiguration at Mount Tabor, when Jesus transfigured himself, who was there? Moses, Elijah. So did Moses cross the Jordan and step foot on the promised land? Finally? Yes! God will never shortchange you, my friend. Never. He's a good God. Do you trust Him? 
He will never, never shortchange you. You know, even the Apostle Paul, and I close with this, ask God, God, can you please remove this thorn from my flesh? It's troubling me. I don't know what it is. Three times. God says no. But I'm Paul, you know. God says no. You know what was Paul's response? He didn't grumble. He didn't complain. He said all this was done so that I will not be conceited. Imagine if God answered all your prayers, yes, 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 yes. You know, you'd be conceited, right? You will not grow, right? You'll be like a spoiled bread, right? So Paul says, no, it's given to me. The thorn. God says, no, so that I will not be conceited. And God said to Paul, my grace is sufficient for you, for my strength is made perfect in weakness. And Paul's response, therefore, I glory in my weakness so that the power of Christ may rest upon me. Can that be our response? Yes, Lord, I don't understand when you said no. But I know it's for my good. Let's pray. Hallelujah, Lord. Those of you in the online at home as well, can you just bow your heads with me in this solemn moment? Oh, Ramanda Kata You know, God has said no to many people in the Bible, to Paul, even to David. You know, when David's son was the Bathsheba died, seven days David lied on the floor. God said no. God up. He accepted it. God also said no to David when David is a noble request. God, I want to build you a house. How noble can that be? But God says no. You are a man of war. Your son will build your house. Did David throw a tantrum? Ah! No. David says, God, if not me, my son. I will set him up to win. I will lay down everything so that God, he will build you a wonderful house. That's why he's a man after God's own heart. My friend, can I encourage you? Trust God. Submit to him. And continue serve Him with all your heart because He's a good God. All heads bowed, all eyes closed. I'm going to make an altar call for you to stand. Is any one of you now are going through a very difficult patch and asking God for one thing but so far, you have not yet received your answer. I'm going to say to you, maybe God said no to you, no? It may be yes either, I don't know. But I'm going to ask you and challenge you. Whatever the answer is from God, if you're willing to submit, you stand. Now, it doesn't mean when you stand, it's going to be yes, huh? No. It could also be no. But when you stand, you're responding to the word that say, yes, Lord, I trust you. I submit to you. And I will continue to love you and serve you. If it's you, you stand. Let me pray for you. No one looking around. Very solemn altar call. It's an altar call of trust. It's an altar call of surrender. It's an altar call of no matter what, God knows best. 
No matter what, Lord, I trust in you. I trust in you. Like Shadrach, Meshach and Abednego, Lord, you will deliver me. But even if you don't, I will still trust in you. That is all the call I'm asking you to stand. That faith, that kind of a faith, do you have it? And I'm going to pray that you have it, my friend. I'm going to pray with all my heart, no matter what it is, you trust in a good God. He is a good God. Hallelujah. Those of you at home as well, you either stand or you raise your hands as I pray. And so, Father, in Jesus' name, as these people are standing in your presence, Lord, I know you are here. I know, Father God, it demands faith. It demands trust. It demands total surrender, even though we may not understand. But we know we don't need to understand. We only need to trust. So God, in the name of Jesus Christ of Nazareth, I want to pray that you stop our whining and turn it to winning. Stop our murmuring and turn it to moving forwards. No matter what, Lord, we trust in you. You are a good God. There is not one speck of evil inside of you because we know that whatever it is, is for our good. And we trust you. We trust you for our work, for our business, for our health, for our families, for our children and our grandchildren. We trust in you no matter what. Yes, Lord, we may not know the future, but we know who holds the future. Unknown future, but known God. Oh, Ramanda, Jesus' name, I pray for strength. I pray, God, that you will bless every one of the people standing here, whatever their prayer request may be. Well, so we surrender it to you, Father Lord, that we believe the Father God knows, Father God hears, Father God sees, and Father God cares. Oh, Ramanda, da, 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 Shoko. Thank you, Lord. We believe in you, Jesus. We really believe in you. We really believe in you. Father, come what may. We put our hands in your hands. We put our lives in your life. We, your hands. We put our future in your hands. Take us, Father Lord, and lead us on. Thank you, God. You're a good God. We love you. We worship you. Thank you, Father. Blessed be the name of the Lord. Blessed be the name of the Lord. Amen and amen. Let's all stand and sing this wonderful song. It's a prayer unto the Lord. Hallelujah. Jesus, I believe in you. In you. Jesus, I belong to you. Come what may. The Lord will never leave you, will never forsake you, understand? Your hands into the hands of God. Into your hands, I commit again with all I am for you. Sing as a prayer to Him, would you then? Oh, Ramanda Kata, da 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 Yes, Lord, yes, 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 Lord. Oh, Jesus, I believe in you. Jesus, I belong to you. You're the reason that I believe. Whoa, the reason that I say, Jesus, I believe.
believe in Jesus. Don't just sing it. Believe it. He's a good God. If you cannot trust Jesus, who can you trust? Who? You tell me. He will not shortchange you. You may not understand. You know that when Joshua said, "Be strong and very courageous," in Joshua chapter one, where did he learn that from? Moses. Moses that said it. Deuteronomy thirty-one, and with this, I'll close. Be strong and very courageous, Moses said. Do not be afraid or terrified because of them, for the Lord your God goes with you. He will never leave you. He will never forsake you. Is it Deuteronomy? Not in Joshua. So, Father, in Jesus' name, we take heart, Father Lord, that we are strong and very courageous. We will not be terrified of the future because you are going to be with us, Lord. You will never leave us. You never forsake us. You will take us. Over the Jordan, into the Promised Land, wherever that is, it would be good. It will be wonderful. Hallelujah! Thank you, God. So once again, thank you, God, for your Word. May we always live by your Word, saturated by your Word, soaked in your Word, and live it out every day in our discipleship journey. That we will grow. Mature and not like a baby. Thank you, Father. Separate us now with your blessing, and so may the Lord bless you and keep you this day. May the Lord make His face always to shine upon you and be gracious to you. May the Lord turn His face towards each and every one of you and your family, and always grant you peace in your home. In Jesus' name, I pray. Because people say aloud. Amen. Come on, let's give what a good clap offering. God bless you. Have a wonderful, wonderful week. Amen. Thank you for joining us for service today. If you would like someone to pray for you, head over to the link, and our pastors and leaders would love to pray and connect with you. One of the DNAs of SIBKL is to be a generous church. It is now so much easier for you to give. All you need to do is to scan this QR code, and it will lead you to our giving page. You can give via online banking transfer or do it now transfer. You can also drop your tithe and offerings in the box just outside the sanctuary. It is because of your generous giving that we can be a blessing to others. If you're new to our church, do fill up your welcome card so that you can redeem your free gift. If you've parked in Bangunan Yin, don't forget to validate your Touch and Go card. Hi everyone! Would you like to get to know SIBKL a little bit more? If you've ever had such questions like, how can I join a cell group? How can I serve in a ministry? How can I be discipled? How can I be a member? How can I join one of our SIBKL events? Or any other questions? Then I invite you to click on the link below, and we will connect with each other via WhatsApp. One of our Connect leaders will reach out to you. We would love to connect with you, so we invite you to connect with us. God bless.
one more time, Lord, you are God. Waymaker, miracle worker, promise keeper, light in the darkness, my God, that is who you are. You are here, touching every heart. I worship you. I worship you. Yes, Lord, healing. You are here. Lord, you are turning lives around. You are here, turning lives around. I worship you. Till light came. And made us alive in the fullness of his peace and presence. Join us for our Good Friday and Easter services to experience the light of Christ. If you're new to our church, do fill up your welcome card so that you can redeem your free gift. If you've parked in Bangunan Yin, don't forget to validate your Touch and Go card. One of the DNAs of SIBKL is to be a generous church. It is now so much easier for you to give. You can give via online banking transfer or do it now transfer. All you need to do is to scan this QR code and it will lead you to our giving page. You can also drop your tithe and offerings in the box just outside the sanctuary. It is because of your generous giving that we can be a blessing to others. Do you have some pre-loved items to give away? You can donate to Bless Ministry Collection Point at SMCC. You heard that right. Not Bangunan Yin, but at SMCC. Head up to the car park to level 1A and drop off your donation to share your blessings. Scan this QR code for more information. Break me. 
light came. And made us alive in the fullness of his peace and presence. Join us for our Good Friday and Easter services to experience the light of Christ. If you're new to our church, do fill up your welcome card so that you can redeem your free gift. If you've parked in Bangunan Yin, don't forget to validate your Touch and Go card. One of the DNAs of SIBKL is to be a generous church. It is now so much easier for you to give. You can give via online banking transfer or do it now transfer. All you need to do is to scan this QR code and it will lead you to our giving page. You can also drop your tithe and offerings in the box just outside the sanctuary. It is because of your generous giving that we can be a blessing to others. Do you have some pre-love items to give away? You can donate to Bless Ministry Collection Point at SMCC. You heard that right. Not Bangunan Yin, but at SMCC. Head up to the car park to level 1A and drop off your donation to share your blessings. Scan this QR code for more information.
until light came. and made us alive in the fullness of his peace and presence. Join us for our Good Friday and Easter services to experience the light of Christ. If you're new to our church, do fill up your welcome card so that you can redeem your free gift. If you've parked in Bangunanyin, don't forget to validate your Touch and Go card. One of the DNAs of SIBKL is to be a generous church. It is now so much easier for you to give. You can give via online banking transfer or do it now transfer. All you need to do is to scan this QR code and it will lead you to our giving page. You can also drop your tithe and offerings in the box just outside the sanctuary. It is because of your generous giving that we can be a blessing to others. Do you have some pre-love items to give away? You can donate to Bless Ministry Collection Point at SMCC. You heard that right. Not Bangunan Yin, but at SMCC. Head up to the car park to level 1A and drop off your donation to share your blessings. Scan this QR code for more information. 